Hey guys, thanks for stopping by. Today we're gonna go over some more fun upgrades. This is gonna be upgrades part two. We're gonna do some more upgrades to the ANET A6. Um, I've actually already done them. I did an X carriage upgrade. I put MOSFETs in. Uh, I wanna show you a few little things with uh, some of the electronics. I added a new power supply. Just a quick note, first and foremost, thank you to my subscribers for subscribing and uh, encouraging me to, to do this. I really appreciate the support. You guys are awesome. So let's get to it. First thing I did was these X carriage mounts. These are really nice. They're lightweight. I printed them in PLA Plus by eSun. I'll put a link in the description for that filament. It's a great filament, a very strong filament. It took a long time to print, but man, it's a really nice setup. You can see how rigid it is. Everything is just tight and, and secure. This, uh, this X carriage also moved a few things around. It moved the limit switch over to this side. Eventually, I'm, uh, I have a, um, an E3D Titan Arrow extruder coming. It's a clone. I'm going to be installing that on there. So that's going to change where this limit switch goes. There's going to be a lot of things different. Um, this this uh, park cooling fan is probably going to be moved. And uh, the sensor is going to have to be moved. So that's another undertaking. And that will be another video. Another thing I did is I installed the IGIS dryland bearings. I can put a link in the description for those too. I bought an 8-pack of those and I ran short because this takes two, two on this side and two on that side. I thought, I thought it only took one, but I also installed them on the Y carriage. I'm not sure if you can see that in there. There's some on the Y carriage also, but man, those are great and what's nice about them is you can kind of adjust the tension on them. There's set screws on this mount and by tightening or loosening the set screws you can adjust the amount of squeeze it puts on these rods. So that's a really cool thing. And then over here on these uh, lower blocks, these bearing blocks under here, they're held in with some snap rings. There's snap rings on both sides. So you need a, a small set of uh, snap ring pliers. You can get them eBay, Amazon, Harbor Freight has them. But what I found is when I took the old bearings out and put the dryland bearings in, they were a little loose in the bore. Um, so what I did is I went to my old trick and I wrapped them with Teflon tape, which is what I did on, on these over here and here. I did that over there. I did it over here. And I just wrapped them with uh, with Teflon tape so that they're tight against the bore. And then I put the snap rings back in, and now everything is nice and tight. There, you can see there's no play in anything here. I also set up my bed adjustment with these little screws. Um, these these screws that come down from the top now are um, they're held in place with a nut. Up above so they're the nut sandwiches that screw to this so I can simply adjust it by twisting this knob which is really nice especially for the back ones because the back ones are really hard to get at on this uh, a net a6 because of the rods that come through here but now I can just put my finger in there and just slide back and forth so that's a big that's a big improvement I kind of like that now we're going to go over to the electronic side of things. You can see that I have two power supplies now. This power supply only drives the heat bed and the heat block for the extruder. That's all that drives. Well, it also, it also drives this fan. But that's it. Um, I pumped this voltage up to 15, a little over 15 volts, which is good because that reduces the amperage going through the wire. 
I also have some clips about how you can crank up the voltage on this PSU. You don't want to crank up the voltage on this PSU if it's powering this board. It needs to stay in the 12 volt range. But if it's only powering the heating elements, you can crank it up to 15 volts. You know, just don't do it. Don't do it if you're driving the board or any other kind of electronics that require 12 volts. Something I learned about this PSU is there's a uh, there's an adjustment on this. If you use this, everything's disconnected here. Right here, there's a little screw. It's, it's like a pot, I guess, a potentiometer. Um, you can crank this up, and then you can get 14 volts out of this 12 volt rail on here. So at 14 volts, it'll draw less amperage. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to run the heating elements off of this PSU, and this one here is just going to be for the logic board and the um, and the LED lights. Okay, so I want to show you right now. You can see this. We're getting 12.66 volts out of this. Now, I'm not sure if you can hear this fan or not, because that fan's connected directly to the 12 volts. Now when I crank this up, crank it up all the way, I'm getting 15.35 volts. So that means more voltage, less amperage. And more voltage, uh, voltage is like pressure in a water pipe, so it's more pressure and less volume. Amperage is volume. So basically we can push more water through a smaller pipe. So we're going to leave that at 15.35. That's going to be for the heat bed and the uh, extruder heating element. I installed the MOSFETs. And this is kind of a little bit of spaghetti in here. But you can see there's a MOSFET for the heat bed and a MOSFET for the uh, heater block. And you can see that now they're just getting a signal off the board. And they're basically switching the power on and off from this power supply. What's nice about this is you can crank it up to 15 volts, number one, which is really good. But also, with this new power supply, this is a, an ATX power supply. And this puts out 340 watts at 12 volts it puts out 12.5 amps but we don't need a lot of amperage because the only thing this is driving is the board and the steppers and my led lights inside so that's plenty of power and the other thing that's nice about these atx power supplies is uh it's a nice clean power it's not it's not dirty power like this because when i was just running this 3d printer off of this when the heat bed would turn on you could hear the noise coming through the stepper motors I mean you could definitely tell the difference it, it would get a lot noisier and I think it was because of a voltage drop in the steppers and the stepper drivers and it can't be good for the stepper drivers either this puts out a nice clean even 12 volts I and mean, when I put the voltmeter on it's 12 volts exactly this was putting out like 12.6 and I bet you it fluctuated all over the place depending on uh, if the heat bed was turning on and, or if the extruder was on. I appreciate you guys coming by to watch what I'm doing with my printer. Please like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. I really appreciate the encouragement. So thanks for stopping by. Oh, look at that critter. What the heck was that? <laughs> so thanks for stopping by I also want to say thank you to all my subscribers it really encourages me to make these videos thanks for stopping by